This is the Holtzman Knives Baby Silverback Mini Survival Knife. And uh, this was a knife sent to me by Holtzman's. Thank you, Holtzman's. They reached out to me and uh, asked if I wanted to check out one of their mini survival knives. And it was perfect timing because I've gotten into, uh, well, it started with uh, uh, hobo stoves and uh, cooking with the oil and a tuna can and then making fires uh, without a lighter. And, you know, I'm a suburban dad who's uh, not had much outdoor adventures in the last 30 years. And so it's been kind of fun kind of reacquainting myself. I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube and getting tips on how to start fires and how to camp again and all this. And I'm not talking like all that with the high tech gear. I just want to like, I just want to be more comfortable outside and use some of the knives I have. Anyway, I don't mean to, uh, to go off on a jag. All I mean to say is the timing was perfect for Holtzman's to reach out and say, do you want to check out a mini survival knife? Uh, I love mini small fixed blade knives. You know, I carry them a lot and I talk about them a lot. I just did a show on, <clears throat> recorded a show actually on uh, discrete, uh, discrete knives. I did not add this one in that, but uh, could have and should have. Uh, this Silverback Gorilla was uh, one of, I don't know, five choices I had. And I just loved the overall shape of the blade, sort of a clip point sort of a drop point. I guess it's a clip, but it's not, doesn't have a sharp, um, descent here. Uh, slight hollow ground. Uh, yeah, slight. No, maybe that is flat ground. It's really hard to tell. Flat ground, uh, saber ground D2 steel, a really nice contoured G10 handle with those beautiful blue liners. A very comfortable for a three finger handle. Look at this. Pretty damn comfortable. Now, uh, that's why I put that cord there. I need to do something a little better uh, than this. Like, I need bigger knots. The problem is, this is one ding on this blade. That lanyard hole, I like, if you're going to put a lanyard hole, make it big enough to put at least non-gutted 550 cord through. you got to gut this 550 cord to get it through. Um, I would prefer to have a 550, full 550 um, lanyard on this, just so that the knot is bigger, so that I have an extra, you know, feel a little more secure back there. But anyway, it's not like I'm out there hard using this, um, though I did, as you can see, use it to um, start a fire pit fire. I've been doing cooking over the fire. I find that fun. And uh, I, I, luckily, I have a very well stocked kitchen uh, about 20 feet away from where our fire pit is. <laughs> so uh, but I try to bring everything with me as if uh, you know I'm not constantly running back into the kitchen. Um, anyway, I lit the fire with the very excellent ferro, uh, ferro rod. Very excellent, I think, is uh, re re redundant, right? Very excellent. Very is kind of built into excellent. But this is a very uh, nice ferro rod because it's very comfortable to hold. I have I've been uh, experimenting with them, and if they don't have a handle, they're ridiculously uncomfortable to hold. Um, and to get a good purchase on, enough to strike nicely on it. This strikes very well. Of course, like most ferro rods, you gotta do it a couple times to get that coating off and then it throws sparks pretty nicely. Nice and thin and this is just barely a 90 degree spine. Like um, I find that my Mora Eldris, for instance, almost flares out to give you like more than 90 degree. Um, if you know what I mean. Uh, the blade here is is sharp. You'll notice here, uh, the blade here is sharp. Yes, this is the edge. Uh, but what I meant to say is it came with a very nice edge. Uh, I've used it on carving uh, wood, this right here. Um, this has been not done exclusively with this, but a lot of this has been done with this. I find that the saber grind uh, and the flat grind is nice. It, it's to sort of gently pull across to get tiny curls. Uh, to remove tiny bits of wood. Um, but the reason I wanted to show you, uh, I chipped a little bit up here because I was using this to, um, so I have Italian, we have a lot of cans of Italian tuna here, and Italian tuna is packed in um, olive oil. And by the way, I make a delicious tuna red sauce uh, that I learned from my grandpa way back when. It's absolutely delicious, but you do need to use the Italian olive oil packed tuna. But I also have seen some survival hacks on YouTube. Uh, this guy, Sergio Outdoors, I'm not sure where he's from. I think 
think, I don't know where he's from, but anyway, he shows a lot of cool things. And one of them was poking holes in the top of a, um, you know, three or four holes in the top of a tuna can that's packed with oil and uh, put makeup uh, cotton pads, which I have a wife, so I have those around or uh, cotton balls, or you could use little pieces of rope or string or something. Um, and you put it in there and they act as wicks and you can light the, the wicks that are being fed by the olive oil in the tuna can and and it's like a little buddy burner and then you can put uh you know a, a cup suspend a cup over it boil water do your eggs in there so i did that with this and um unfortunately i did it on a lunch hour i ran home from work and i i had to go before i finished boiling the egg i did i underestimated how long it would take to get the water boiling it took a while but the cool thing was it it took a long time to exhaust the fuel of the um, of the tuna, long enough that I had to extinguish it. I opened the can and ate it. The tuna had this roasted, delicious flavor. It was like it cooked in the can a little bit. It was so good. But anyway, uh, that's long for uh, when I jammed it in there and twisted the blade in the top. It took a little, just a little tiny nick. But then I, I touched it up. This actually has a sharpener, and it's not bad though. It's got, it's inconsistent. It's like grittier. Now I've scraped off grit, so uh, it's it's getting to be a little more even, but uh, I was able to just fix the tip on this built-in sharpener. So I, I, I'm really digging this knife, and now I had this on my, uh, let me see if I can bring this in here. This is totally dorky, I know, so don't, you don't have to comment on it, but this is the strap for my shoulder bag. And uh, I had it attached. Oh, there it goes. I had it attached on my shoulder bag right across my chest. And yeah, it looked dorky. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I had no reason to have it there, uh, but I <laughs> I had it for a few days. Went to work, no one said anything. Um, then again, I, don't, I didn't really see anyone with it on, but I did. I, I felt a little nervous about it, but I had this right on my chest. Uh, it fit great uh, with this with this cool um, clip. They have some other clips in here. I like the presentation. Of <clears throat> this came like this with you know the knife here and the sheath here and <clears throat> this sort of um, tech lock style clip here, ferro rod. Um, and so I like how it was all divided up. It's a very nice presentation. They, they ship it with like a boot style clip and, uh, you know, a bead chain. This is too, this is definitely too big and heavy for me to, to carry as a neck knife. Uh, your mileage may vary as they say, um, but came with a uh, 550 cord and, and other ways to mount it and just nice overall presentation. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I've I've been really really liking this knife. Um, no need to wear it on your person when you're out in public, but uh, you can, <laughs> and it goes it goes on very nicely here uh, with this with this very tight fit, zero rattle, um, can push off and it'll launch. Uh, I do want it to loosen up just a a, a, a titch, uh, but that will happen with time. You know that just happens, and mostly. Uh, and mostly that was so that I could pull it out without using the thumb push and without pulling my pants off or, or what have you, wherever this is going to be, or wherever I'm going to be wearing it. There's their logo. Very cool. Silverback Gorilla. Uh, this is the baby silverback. And there's those uh, beautiful contoured handle scales. I got to gotta up my game here on the fob, but I'll figure something out. Maybe I'll I'll attach something to this, but that'll look janky. So I got to figure out how to get some true 550 cord through there without drilling. I don't feel like drilling. And that is that. This is the Holtzman's Silverback Gorilla in D2 blade steel. I'm sorry, baby Silverback in D2 blade steel, uh, contoured G10 with an awesome and versatile clip, uh, sheath with numerous clip options and this really excellent ferro rod. And by the way, a little bit of style, thin blue line on that ferro rod, really like it. Uh, thanks again, Holtzmans, for sending this to me and uh, 
go over to Holtzmans.com or well, I'm sure they're on Instagram and YouTube and go check them out. Thanks a lot for watching.